The Incredibles is a movie that features a family of superheroes who end up defeating an evil mastermind posing to be the savior of the city by attempting to defeat a robot of his own creation. In this video, I will describe and prove the powers of two members of this family under different scenarios. The two characters are Dash, whose ability is super speed, and Mr. Incredible, whose ability is super strength. For the fields portion of this assignment, I will be analyzing the force needed for a portion of Mr. Incredible's workout regimen, where he goes to a train yard and bench presses a train car. Moreover, I will find the charge the train car needs to have in order to have Mr. Incredible lift the same weight on Jupiter using the same applied force as on Earth, fixing the other charge, an electron, at the center of Jupiter. This works because since the force of gravity is larger on Jupiter, the charges will repel each other, which will be added to the force applied to exactly counteract the force of gravity on this planet. For momentum and impulse, I will be finding the kinetic energy Mr. Incredible uses to punch a 2,000 kilogram robot 50 meters away at an angle of 34 degrees. Lastly, for kinetics and kinematics, I will be examining exactly how fast Dash is during a scene where he is escaping the villain's henchman and gets caught swinging around a vine. I will also put him on the moon and compare what his speed needs to be there compared to Earth. Before I begin, for this part of the assignment, I have to acknowledge the fact that Jupiter is made of gas. But in this scenario, we're going to suppose that Mr. Incredible and the train will stay the same distance from the center of Jupiter rather than sinking into the center of the planet. For the fields portion of this assignment, I decided to combine gravitational fields and electric fields to help Mr. Incredible lift the train car on Jupiter while using the same applied force as he would on Earth. To start, let's figure out how much force Mr. Incredible is applying to the train car to sustain it over his head during a bench press on Earth. And here's the free body diagram for the train. To begin to find the force applied, we will use the net force equation and equate it to the forces acting on the train car. Since the train car is not moving, its net force is zero, and we can see that the force applied is equal to the force of gravity acting on the train car. To find the force of gravity acting on the train car, we need to multiply the force of gravity on Earth, negative 9.81 meters per second squared, by the weight of the train car, 44,678.848 kilograms. Now that we know the force that Mr. Incredible has to apply to hold up the train car is 438,299.4489 newtons, we can use electrical fields to even the playing field if we put Mr. Incredible and the train car on Jupiter. To help visualize this, imagine fixing an electron at a point and placing an opposing charge a distance apart from it in order to make itself repel the electron. Now imagine giving the opposing charge a force applied to help it fend off the electron even more. Lastly, Place a force of gravity so large that the electric and applied forces are no longer enough to repel from the other charge, but just strong enough to cancel them out and keep the opposing charge in place. The value we are finding is the charge that the opposing charge, or the train car, needs to have in order to create an electric force large enough that when added to the applied force is equal in magnitude to the gravitational force, but opposite directions to create a net force of zero and keep itself completely stationary. This visualization can also be expressed through the equations force of gravity equals electric force plus applied force or electric force plus applied force minus force of gravity equals zero. We will start by finding Jupiter's acceleration due to gravity by equating two different ways of finding the force of gravity, cancelling out the mass of the train car on both sides and plugging in the rest of the numbers. Now that we know that the acceleration due to gravity on Jupiter is 25.9 meters per second squared down, we can find out how strong the electric force needs to be. 
We use the same equation as on Earth, but this time we also need to include the electric force to compensate for the much larger force of gravity on Jupiter compared to Earth. Now that we have the equation of the net force of the peak of the bench press on Jupiter, we have to rearrange for the electric force. Since the train car is not moving, we know the net force is zero, allowing us to isolate for the electric force. Now we can plug in all of our numbers and get a value for the electric force. Plugging in the formula for the electric force and rearranging allows us to find the value the train car needs to be. Notice the Q1 value is the charge of an electron because the electric force in this scenario is between the train car and a single electron fixed at the center of Jupiter. To conclude, to help Mr. Incredible lift the train car on Jupiter using the same applied force as on Earth, the train car needs to have a charge of negative 2.44 times 10 to the 30 coulombs to create an electric force repelling itself from an electron at the center of Jupiter to compensate for the exaggerated gravity on Jupiter compared to Earth. To continue with Mr. Incredible, let's use momentum to calculate the amount of kinetic energy used in the scene. While analyzing the scene, we see that Mr. Incredible punches the 2000 kg Omnidroid robot a total distance of 50 meters. To begin, let's figure out the horizontal and vertical velocities the Omnidroid is faced with after being punched. To find the Omnidroid's horizontal velocity after the punch, we can just rearrange this, a kinematics equation and divide the horizontal distance traveled by the Omnidroid, 50 meters, by the total time it took the Omnidroid to complete its projectile motion, 2.7 seconds. I found this time using the video's time frames. Now that we know the horizontal velocity the Omnidroid was launched at, which is 18.5182 meters per second, the next step is calculating the initial vertical velocity the Omnidroid was launched at. From this clip, we can tell that the Omnidroid starts off standing and finishes its projectile basically swept off its legs. This means that it had a displacement in the vertical direction that needs to be accounted for. This displacement is the height of one of its legs minus the height of its body's lowest point. From this clip, the height appears to be Mr. Incredible's height, which is 6 feet and 7 inches, or 2 meters exactly. So rearranging the same kinematics equation as before, we can calculate the Omnidroid's initial vertical velocity, which is 11.23 meters per second. Now that we know the values for the initial vertical and horizontal velocities of the Omnidroid's projectile, we will find the resultant velocity of both vectors by using the Pythagorean equation and using tan to find the resultant angle. Knowing that the resultant initial velocity of the Omnidroid's projectile is 22.3 meters per second, 34 degrees above the horizontal, we can use momentum equations to find the velocity which Mr. Incredible used to punch the Omnidroid. In this equation, the M1 and V1 are Mr. Incredible's mass and velocity at the moment of the punch. The M2 and V2 are the Omnidroid's mass and velocity at the moment of the punch. The M1 prime and V1 prime are Mr. Incredible's mass and velocity after the punch, and M2 prime, V2 prime are the Omnidroid's mass and velocity after the punch. We can remove the parts of the equation that are crossed out because since the velocities at these points are 0 meters per second, the values of these points are 0 meters kilograms per second, which does not affect the outcome of the calculation. Moving forward, we can input the values for Mr. Incredible's mass, the Omnidroid's mass, and the velocity of the Omnidroid at the moment of the punch. Once we rearrange the equation for Mr. Incredible's fist at the moment of the punch, we can solve. We find that the velocity of Mr. Incredible's punch is 282.3 meters per second, 34 degrees above the horizontal. To calculate the amount of kinetic energy Mr. Incredible used to punch the Omnidroid, we must first acknowledge that not all of Mr. Incredible punched the Omnidroid. 
only as fist with the help of his muscular arms. This means that when calculating the kinetic energy of this punch, we will only use the mass of one of his arms as m, since on average, according to this link, a man's arm, including the upper arm, forearm, and hand, weighs about 5.8% of the person's total mass. Mr. Incredible's arm weighs 9.2 kilograms. Plugging this into the kinetic energy formula, as well as the velocity of the punch squared, we can calculate that the kinetic energy of the punch is about 365,154.7 joules. To conclude, the kinetic energy of Mr. Incredible's arm punching the Omnidroid 50 meters away at an angle of 34 degrees above the horizontal is 365,154.7 joules. For kinematics, we will be finding what Dash's speed needs to be in order to maintain his vertical centripetal rotation around a 20 meter long vine on Earth compared to the Moon while keeping the force of tension on both bodies the same. To begin, we need to understand that the net force of any centripetal motion is just the centripetal force. So, we will equate the basic formula of net force, mass times acceleration, making sure we apply the acceleration as centripetal acceleration to the formula for centripetal force. We can cancel out da Dash's mass and rearrange for velocity. To solve, we need the radius of the swing and the time it took Dash to make a full rotation. We don't get to see the full rotation because he gets flung off first, but looking deeper into the clip, it looks like Dash went a about a third away around the full circle that and it took him one second. This means that the full circle would have taken approximately 3 seconds. As for the length of the vine, the average length of a jungle vine is 20 meters, so we will use this for the radius of the swing. Now we can plug in all the numbers and calculate the velocity used throughout the swing, ignoring air resistance, which is 42 meters per second. Let's switch to kinetics, where we will find the force of tension in the rope, in this case, at the very beginning of the swing. To find the force of tension in a rope at the bottom of the motion, we need to first create an equation. At the bottom of the swing, the tension force is equal to the force of gravity plus the centripetal force. We will find the centripetal force by using the centripetal force formula, using the centripetal velocity as v and dash's mass, 27 kilograms, as m. Now that we know what the centripetal force is, 2,381.4 newtons, we can plug this into the tension formula. We can solve for gravity in the formula and finally find the force of tension, which is 2,116.53 newtons. Lastly, we need to find Dash's velocity if the swing was completed on the moon. To do this, we have to first find the acceleration due to gravity on the moon. To find the force of gravity when using the same equation, we do this the same way we found the acceleration due to gravity on Jupiter. We equate two equations for the force of gravity, cancel out the mass of the object, and plug in the mass and radius of the moon, where the mass is 7.35 times 10 to the 22 kilograms, and the radius is 1.737 times 10 to the 6 meters, and the gravitational constant is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 19 newtons meters squared per kilogram squared. We find that the acceleration due to gravity on the moon is negative 1.62 meters per second squared. Now we can use the same equation for the force of tension on Earth, but rearrange for the velocity and the centripetal force. We will use the same force of tension as on Earth and use the acceleration due to gravity we found on the moon to find the force of gravity. The rest of the variables used to find the centripetal force, such as radius and period, stay the same as on Earth as well. To conclude, once we rearrange and solve, we see that the velocity of the same centripetal motion on the Moon as on Earth is 40 meters per second. Overall, in this assignment, we explored Dash's and Mr. Incredible's actions through electric and gravitational fields, kinetics and kinematics, and momentum and energy.
In Fields, we found the charge the train car needed to be to allow Mr. Incredible to lift the same weight on Jupiter while using the same applied force, assuming the other charge is an electron fixed at the center of Jupiter. For momentum, we found the energy of Mr. Incredible's fist while punching the 2,000 kilogram Omnidroid 50 meters away. Lastly, for kinematics and kinetics, we found the velocity of a centripetal motion on Earth versus the Moon and the force of tension of the vine on Earth. Thank you for watching.